Namaste. Hi. Our bodies are not perfectly symmetrical. It tends to favor one side. And normally we use a stronger side in stabilizing and controlling our practice of asana. And this is quite obvious during the practice of deep back bends. Yeah, Ustrasana, the kneeling ones, and the Kaputasana. So for today, I'd like to share with you some drills on how you can keep your body towards the center. Yeah. Um, yes, it's all right to use your stronger side so you can keep your posture stable. But yeah, there are ways for you to at least narrow the difference. So the more the body is towards the midline, the more stable and the more supported our practice. All right. So in the kneeling back bend, yeah, I want you to pay attention to this side. Yeah, so this is my, I say, more open side. Yeah, I tend to use my right side in uh, controlling you know, my kneeling back bend, especially during you know, the setup. All right. So in the kneeling back bends, you, know, you want your knees you know, to set it up narrower than the hips, actually. The reason being, as your spine opens at the back, your hips you know, will move forward. And that will essentially allow you know, the tailbone to slightly scoop under. Yeah. You know. The danger of opening your legs yeah, right away when you're doing the setup is that you are not allowing your low back to open its potential. And when your legs are too wide in the setup, yeah, the, the hips will scoop forward too soon. And that will uh, essentially yeah, prevent your lower back from extending, rather it will go to a flexion. So to prevent that from happening, so you can use the legs, you can use the pelvis and and stabilizing and supporting your back bends, keep them narrow. All right, and expect them to open wider when you are curling back. So in the Ustrasana, yeah, for some people, yeah, you will feel this right away in the Ustrasana. But for me, since my spine is quite open already, it's not too obvious. But I, I still want you to pay attention here, yeah? Set up the Ustrasana, you can walk the knees. Sometimes you can even do this, yeah? So you can lift the spine of your hips already. All right, now breathing in, yeah, you may lean back, good, and exhale. All right, notice yeah, this part of me tends to move away. Yeah. So you can do, once your hands are already at the back, good. keep the chest open, all right, try to walk your knees towards the midline. All right, and then use yeah, your, I say, more active side to hug the opposite one. Yeah, and here the knees go narrow, yeah, midline, so you have that more platform and support and stability to press down and open backwards. All right, and I'll try to yeah, progress this now to a supported, uh, I say, progression of the Kaputasana. Now, so from there, yeah, placing your hands behind you, down the floor, all right, such, the, such as this. Now, yeah, you will feel that your body will try to lean to, uh, I say, your more open side, yeah? Because you're using your active side in stabilizing and lifting you up. So what you do, yeah, once you're there, all right, try to move the weight of your uh, upper body towards <laughs> your more, I say looser, yeah, or more flexible side. And then from there, yeah, walking again the knees towards the midline, inching them into the midline, and at the same time, pushing away. Good. And then adjust the hands. Yep. And then, then you will feel now that your spine can fully extend because your hips, yeah, are stable, your legs are supporting you in pushing away. And you can open the spine further to the back. And this is the benefit of the back bend. When you are not using your low back, rather you're using the chest, you're using the upper back in opening the discs of your spine. All right, and then to come up, inhaling. Good, good, hugging in and exhaling and then notice yeah the legs remain 
towards the center line and they're not too wide apart. And you can walk the knees. Good. All right. If you're practicing your Kapotasana already, you can apply that yeah, before you place your elbows to the back. Yeah, so the setup is the same. Yeah? Good. Narrow in. Exhale. Yeah, breathing in. You can lift the heart. You can lift the spine first and then lightly sway. I use my tongue a lot in gaining access to those inner pockets. Yeah? You might be feeling that already at this stage. All right. Exhale. Breathing in. Exhale, loosen. Every time you want to lift the spine, inhale forward. Good. And upwards. Exhale, backwards and downwards. All right. So I will now reach for my heels for the Kaputasana. All right. As such, okay, now, before you place your elbows down the ground, yeah, stabilize your arms, reposition your shoulders. All right. Now, nourish the breath in, and then adjusting your knees to the midline. All right, walking them in, inching them in, in, in. Okay, now readjust the hands, breathing in, forward, up and back, exhale, back and down. Inhale, up and forward, up and back, exhale, back and down. All right, to descend, breathing in, and at the top of the breath, just a light kumbaka, place your elbows on the ground, and exhale out. Good. And then breathe naturally here. Good. Notice <laughs> this leg yeah, is, is sliding out. Good. 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 And then to come up, breathing in. All right. Place your hands to the ground. And then you can repeat the drill, shifting side to side. And then walking your knees towards the midpoint. Good. Breathing in, press up, inhaling, inhaling, and exhale, hips lightly close. And you walk them back towards the midline. Good. So the less um, tendency for our thighs to open, the more stable the hips are, because we're using the hips in creating that foundation and that platform so you can draw yeah, the discs of your spine, the muscles surrounding and wrapping your spine upwards to the vertical so the chest will open beautifully towards the back. Good luck. See you in the next lesson.